So today the conditions were perfect to go and take a look at some of the wind erosion that we've seen across the Red River Valley. Uh, so Dave, Jody and I headed out to the field and we looked at some different management approaches from different types of tillage to prevent plant um, to different residue covers. So what we're going to do is we'll take you kind of on that tour with us and, and show some of the pictures and images and talk about what we saw and why the wind erosion might be different in one field versus another. The first field that we were in uh, had bean stubble and the problem with bean stubble is that it's pretty fragile and it breaks apart very easily and there was probably there was less than 30 percent residue there and by the time he does uh, spring tillage uh, and he'll get it down probably less than 20 percent residue and that really set him up for wind erosion in the winter time and also this spring he's going to have a problem before full canopy. So this is a prevent plant field. We had what, millions of acres of prevent plant in North Dakota this last year and uh, instead of putting a cover crop on and trying to use some of the water and trying to prevent what we're seeing here, uh, the field was worked several times and it worked again in the fall of the year and what you see now is, is the result. There's a little bit of residue out there but not very much and you see all the effects of the saltation and the creep and the uh, suspension of the particles in the air. Uh, we're losing clays. Uh, we have soil that's moving in little particles across the, across the soil. The wind today is somewhere in the neighborhood of 35, maybe gusts up to 40 miles an hour or so. Uh, the larger particles would really start to move if we had wind speed above that. So we looked at a really nice field that um, that was it was prevent plant this year. It's been in no-till for a couple years. Um, it had you know obviously very wet conditions, but it was put into a full season cover crop. And so as we look across this residue in the field, you can see that the residue is helping to hold the soil in place and do some snow catch um, to replenish that soil from the drying out of the cover crops. Um, you could see a, a really nice. Um, radish residue where the top of the radish is sticking out of the soil still and it's very malleable, it moves quite a bit because these the radish are generally 65% water um, between the, the part that's above the surface and the part that's below the surface. So, um, so this will be decomposed by the spring, it'll be no problem to plant right into this and it's done its purpose of really holding that soil in place and before that it was drying the soil out because it was prevent plant. Um, so this is a really good management approach um, in my mind to, to keep soil in place and prevent plants, to not use tillage to dry the soils out, um, to, to build organic matter, to mine nutrients um, and bring them to the surface for next year's crop and, and a farmer really shouldn't be that concerned um, with the residue and planting right into it because uh, it'll all be decomposed by the spring. The second field that we went to was wheat and what's nice about wheat is it's not planted in 30 inch rows, it's planted in you know, six or seven inch rows and so you have a lot more roots holding the soil together and the tillage pass that he made uh, left the field chunkier and what helps with that is it's just a lot harder to move that soil, the wind can't pick it up quite as easily. But what we did see is that those chunks, after having some wetting and drying and freezing and thawing out there, if you kicked them, they just shattered. Um, you know, when I thought, when you looked at a clod, that it was frozen out there, everything else was frozen. But when you kicked it, it's actually freeze dried and it, it just shattered and it blew with the wind very easily. So we're here on the leeward side of a tree row. The wind is coming from the northwest today and we're on the south side of this tree row and the the height of the tree, the height of the hedge, uh, makes a difference in how much is protected on the leeward side of, of the tree row. Uh, it protects about 10 times the height. So if this tree row is, say, 40 feet high, that's protecting about 400 feet uh, away from that tree row. As we drove down the road, even coming to these fields, you could tell what kind of tillage, you know, how much residue was still left out in that field and how uh, many times they had done the tillage or how aggressively they were out in the field by how much dirt was in the ditch. And we analyzed that dirt that was in the ditch at six different fields in Minnesota, across western Minnesota, and we found that there was about uh, an average of about nine tons of soil was sitting in the ditch for a ditch acre. And of that, the average was about $55 worth of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Then we went to a no-till wheat field. and. It, what was nice about that, one, the wind could not pick up the soil particles because the residue covered them, but also uh, because you had the upright stalks still there, it trapped the snow evenly across the field and it blanketed the field from being eroded away. Some of our uh, crops out there do not lend themselves to any residue after they're harvested, like potatoes or sugar beets. And instead of um, 
One of the ways that you can prevent wind erosion there or slow down the wind is by doing a tillage pass in the fall and making it chunky. And that may seem counterintuitive, but what that does is make a mini topography and slows down the wind and keeps the soil from blowing away quite so bad.